All right, now that we're on our location, let's go ahead and break down everything you need to know about shooting with this Freedom 360 rig. Now, we're gonna go through all the settings because again, it's super important to realize that this is six individual cameras all strapped together in this cube. So we need to make sure that everything matches the other cameras exactly the same. So it sort of goes without saying, but maybe it doesn't. The first thing you wanna do is make sure everything's on video mode. After you've done that, let's go down the exact settings you need. So we're gonna go to camera one here and I'll just go ahead and go down the list. So the first setting you want to adjust is your resolution. Let's set that at 2.7K and our frame size at four by three. For 360, you wanna shoot with four by three squares, not traditional widescreen that becomes incredibly important when you stitch everything together. And we'll shoot at 30 frames per second. We're gonna shoot on the wide angle lens setting. We'll turn ProTune on and we'll shoot in the flat color space. We do this so we have more range in post-production for color correction. And the last thing on the settings that you wanna do is make sure that all of the white balance and ISOs match. This all looks like it matches exactly. The very last thing you do on this is make sure that all six cameras have fresh batteries and formatted micro SD cards. There's nothing worse than being in the middle of a shoot and one of your cameras dies or one of the cards gets full. Hang on, camera's uh -oh. dying. Uh -oh. All the cameras are dying. Oh no. And once you have all the settings matching exactly the same on all of them, your next big question is, what do I mount this rig on to? Traditionally, we put cameras on tripods, but tripods have really big footprints and wide bases. And when people are looking at your 360 video on their phone or on the computer and they look down, you don't wanna see a tripod leg. So how we solved that problem was just getting a bail block, putting it on the bottom of our rig and mounting that to a music stand. It's a small circular footprint. You can use this little tabletop version or get one that you put on the floor with a telescoping arm. That way you can adjust it to the height of your actors or what you want your shot to be. All right, so now that the settings on all of our cameras are exactly the same and it's mounted onto our microphone stand, we're ready to start recording. Right? But there is one really important step that we need to take before we just start pushing the record buttons on all the GoPros, which is we need to give these cameras as much light and information as possible. So before you start pushing record on everything, you wanna bring all of your lights up. All right, now that all the lights are up, we're gonna bring our camera in because now we have all of the information we need for each of these cameras to see in 360, little geometric shapes and angles that the cameras can grab onto so we get clean stitch lines and a clean sphere. But now we're actually ready to push record on these cameras and with that, we have two different options we can take. We can use this GoPro remote. The downside of that is yes, it will sync to all of these cameras and give us nice synchronized start and stop times but we're forced to turn the Wi-Fi function on all the GoPros, which really drains the batteries quick. We're sitting around waiting for the batteries to charge. <laughs> Kills the battery right dead. So the option that I prefer is just good old fashioned manual. So as you can see on this camera, we've labeled each and every one of our GoPros. So starting from one and two, which is exactly opposite from it, I'll just physically push record at the same time. So one and two, great, three and four, Nice, and five and six. And another benefit of actually having your hands on the rig is that you can physically look and see. Red record light, red record light. Everything looks good and we're rolling on everything. Now, we wanna synchronize all of these cameras together. So you can do that two ways. One is with an audio sync by simply clapping. So we're gonna wanna clap on every side of the rig that we can. So now that every camera has at least one time that they see the clap and hear that clap. That's an audio sync, so now we have clean points. We can line all of the footage up later. Your second option is a wiggle sync, letting it sync off of the motion of the cameras as well. That is as simple as just twisting it. And so now it has synchronized points where the cameras both move and you have audio spikes. But there's one more really important part of production that we're forgetting about here that has a special thing we need to do in 360 and that is audio, but I'm gonna let David take care of that. David, what's up? Recording audio in 360 is really no different from any other type of video, except that it's in 360, so you see everything, including the mics you might normally use. So, boom mics are out of the question. You're going to have to rely on 
Excuse me one second. Hey, David, what about that? Hey, what about that? Is that out of the question? Thank you. Like Thank that? you for that. You're welcome. What you're going to want to do is individually mic each performer with their own lavalier mic and hide them under their clothes so you can't see like anything. This? If I do it like that? Then you can isolate those tracks and mix and post so it sounds great. What about that? Does that sound great? It's real close. It's I know. Real close to your mouth. I know it is. I know Does it, it sound better I'm, now? I'm, I'm the, the sound guy. Real close. So now we have all of the cameras rolling. We have our lav mic rolling. Our audio guy is ready to go. We're ready to go. Now we want to bring our lights back down to how they originally were and get our nice dramatic look. Our cameras don't need all the lights on anymore. We get our camera in our final position, but there's still a couple of other things we want to do before we just start jumping in and rolling. Like I've said before, shooting with 360 is a lot like a one act play. So you really need to rehearse this thing like it's a theatrical production. And there's a lot of things to keep in mind with 360. As we can see on this rig, there's pretty huge areas in between each of the cameras where there might not be as much or as clean of coverage as you would have if you're just facing straight up to one of the cameras. So even in blocking your actors as they're moving around the space, if they're gonna land on a position, make sure they're facing flush to one of the lenses instead of sort of ending up in these points or lines that intersect the cameras because you're gonna land in a stitch line. And that's just horizontal action. There's also Z axis or how far away you are from the camera. So even in the position that I'm at right now, I'm faced right at this camera, nice and flush. My whole body is in front of it. I'm gonna be nice and clean in front of this camera. But if I put my arms down, now both of my arms are facing right into the stitches. So that's not gonna be terribly clean. A really easy way to fix this is just to back up away from the camera, letting more of the field of view of that lens find me and just be smart about how you block your actors and where you position your camera. Sometimes you really want an actor to be in a specific spot on your set or in your location. So if that's the case, then you just turn your camera to best suit that part of your story. Again, everything that we're doing in 360 and telling the story is supposed to work with one another, not against each other. All right, cameras are rolling. Cameras one and two, three, four, five, six. Here comes a sink, here we go. And just as a recap, all of this information is down in the description below. But now that you understand how to get all of the settings going on this camera, how to get it up and running, sync all of the cameras together and use your audio, it's time for you to shoot your video. That's the easy part, right? But there's one final step, and that is taking all of this into post-production, importing all of the footage, stitching it together, exporting it and uploading it onto YouTube. So click this annotation right here. It's basically the whole screen. Almost you can just click anywhere or click the link in the description to check out our post-production video and subscribe to the space while you're at it. There's a button around here somewhere that'll do that. And quite frankly, I'd really appreciate it. But you know, I have my feelings, it's fine. I'll see you in post. <laughs>